Chances are you're paying too much for homeowner's insurance. Too often we buy a policy and forget about it. Insurance companies are counting on that. If you want to save money, you need to shop around every few years. And you don't have to settle for a poorly rated company or get a bare bones policy to get a better deal. Researchers at Checkbook find that switching to a lower priced company can save you up to $1,500 a year. I'm Herb Weisbaum, the Consumer Man, a contributing editor at Checkbook.org. Welcome to Consumerpedia at Checkbook.org. We're the nonprofit that helps consumers select services, avoid trouble, and save money. Because we don't accept any advertising or take money from any business we recommend, you can rely on Checkbook.org to be completely independent and objective. Now, here's the host of Consumerpedia, America's consumer expert, the consumer man, Herb Weisbaum. In this episode, how much coverage do you really need? and how do insurance companies set their rates. Also, why Checkbook believes insurance companies should be prohibited from using credit scores to set their premium prices. Here to walk us through all this is Checkbook's executive editor, Kevin Brassler. Hey, Herb. So in a previous episode of Consumerpedia, you and I talked about tips for saving money. And the one that came up, and we just touched on it briefly, was shopping around for a better home and auto insurance rates every couple of years. So let's dig into that in this episode. Why is that so important, and how much can people expect to save if they take the time to do that? Most of us can save a lot by every few years shopping around for better rates. Checkbook researchers, we've been shopping for rates for decades now, and we always find that most of us can save hundreds of dollars each year, and some homeowners can save $1,500 a year simply by switching to a lower-cost company. Now, it's kind of a pain to do this shopping around. The price comparison websites that are out there that promise to do all this work for you don't really work well at all. They provide rates only for companies that pay at the highest commissions, which often aren't the lowest price Uh, insurance companies. Uh, So to really shop around, you'll have to sit for a few hours and collect rates and maybe talk to a few agents. Uh, I always say it's like doing your taxes, except, you know, after you've taken a few hours to shop, you'll probably find that you can save $500 or more per year, uh, and sometimes a lot more than that. So, so a lot of homeowners and, and drivers can save $1,500 a year simply by taking some time and shopping around for better rates. That's worth your time to do. And I can testify to that because my car and homeowner's policies were up for renewal in May, and I had my agent shop around, and by changing companies, and this was another top-rated company, my wife and I saved several hundred dollars a year and got the exact exact same coverage. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's definitely a myth out there that the prices for home insurance don't vary that much from company to company. There's also another myth out there that if you haven't any claims, that that means your company is already offering you this huge discount and low rates uh, to continue your insurance. Because after all, I mean, you've been a good customer. You haven't been a problem for them. But for most of us, really kind of the opposite is true. Uh, Insurance companies, especially homeowners insurance companies, tend to lock in new customers to a certain company and tier of coverage that costs X amount each year and then keep charging them that amount year after year for renewals. And if anything, your rate goes up a little bit each year, right? Because the cost of construction go up. On the other hand, there are other companies out there that are willing to offer you discounts uh, in order to attract new business. And so for property insurance, especially for homeowners insurance, the really the goal of the insurance company is to sign on new customers. And so often the best deals in terms of what your premiums are going to be for coverage require making an insurance switch, you know, going to a lower cost company that's willing to offer you a really low rate to attract you as a customer, as opposed to the higher rate that you're going to be charged for renewal to stick with the company where you've been for 10 years or more. Yeah, a lot of people think I'm a loyal customer, I'm going to get the best rates. And that may have been the case in the past, but that's not true anymore. Some companies actually use algorithms that tell them this person isn't about to leave and you don't have to worry about giving them a better price. So just keep that in mind. The whole marketplace has changed. Yeah, I think what most homeowners and most drivers don't realize is that, you know, okay, yeah, you've been a good customer. Uh, Other companies will know that also because all these insurance companies, they share, they dig into our driving records. For homeowners insurance, they all share claims information. So they all know about if you've had a claim or you haven't. And so especially if you haven't had claims, you need to know that, well, other companies know that too. So any kind of discount you're getting for being claims free or being a quote unquote loyal customer to your current insurance company. Other companies know that too. They also know that you've been a good payer if you've been paying on time. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to be willing to offer you low rates to attract you as a new customer. 
So for the spring magazine issue, Checkbook collected home insurance rates for several families in each of our seven metro areas. And we found huge price differences from company to company for each of those families. Could you give us just one example? Yeah, well, I'll give you, you know, really what I call the perfect example of why folks should shop around for better rates. And that's because as usual, as you know, Herb, I often don't follow my own advice and am paying <laughs> the price for that. So we currently insure with USAA, both our home and our cars, and it gave us you know, great pricing 15 years ago when I began insuring with it. But when our researchers shopped for coverage for me for my current house, they found that I could stick with USAA and just for homeowners coverage, continue mm-hmm. to pay more than $3,000 each year. Wow. I know, it's a lot, right? Or I could switch to Hippo and pay just $1,518 a year or switch to Erie and pay $1,556 a year. And even Progressive also offered me a low rate. It was about $1,800 a year. So by the way, along with USAA, State Farm, American Family, and HomeSite, they all offered to cover me for more than $3,000 a year. So again, you know what we're talking about here is my options are to stick with USAA and pay more than three grand a year or switch to a different company and pay about half that. You know, I would save $1,500 a year every year that I continue coverage with that new company. And that's for the same coverage from going from one company to the other, a good company to another good company. Yeah, I mean, insurance companies, they love to tout that, you know, they offer policy features that somehow make their plans superior to others. But really, most insurance companies, especially for home insurance, they sell roughly the same thing. Uh, And when we collected these rates, we made sure to get pricing for the exact same coverage amounts and options from each of the companies. You know, a lot of folks, they say to themselves, well, you know, yeah, okay, but my policy just renewed or, yeah, I need to remember to deal with this, right, in a few months, you know, before my existing policy expires. But you need to know there's really no reason to wait to shop around and no reason to wait to switch. And that is because by law, if you switch your old insurance company, it has to send you a refund for the unused share of any insurance you paid for. Mm. So there's really no reason to wait. You should should just do this when you have time to do it and switch right away if you can save a lot of money. Because waiting, you know, until your policy expires or whatever, it just means you're going to continue to overpay. And let's be perfectly clear here. Switching does not mean you have to give up coverage or settle for a poorly rated company that doesn't pay its claims. Your $1,500 savings is based on apples to apples kind of comparison. Yeah, I mean, as best we could, we were comparing the same plans and for the same coverage amounts from company to company. Uh, And what we found and what we often find is that most homeowners usually have available to them a high quality, low priced option. So for example, in my case, I'll likely switch to Erie. It was one of the companies that quoted prices that are about half of what I'm paying now. It actually has a good reputation. It gets good ratings when we survey policyholders and roofers and ask them to evaluate these companies for claims processing service. Mm -hmm. But you know, I have to say, even if a middling company, even if Erie didn't offer me a low rate and the best rate I could get was from, you know, some other company that didn't rate so highly as Erie or even USAA, which also gets favorable ratings from its customers, I think I'd still switch. And that is because, you know, most policyholders are with companies that provide really no better service than what they'll get from some other low-cost option. I mean, it's not as if State Farm gets stellar ratings when we survey its policyholders about its claim service. Its ratings it gets, they're about the same as most other insurers. So you may as well switch to, I don't know, farmers or travelers or whatever and save $1,000 a year to do so. Because to me, you know, homeowner's insurance, it's all about what you're paying for coverage. So this is like, you know, famous last words, right? But the odds of having a claim, they're pretty low. Yeah, I'd rather grab the $1,500 a year savings than stick with USAA, even though it has a pretty good reputation in terms of claim service. So, you know, even Herb, in your case, I mean, you had a claim a few years ago, and it's Mm -hmm. nice that your company got paid promptly and got paid well. And so, yeah, you do want to pay attention to quality, but I think with home insurance especially, it's all about a price play. Who's offering you the lowest premium for the same amount of coverage, you know, standard amount of coverage that you want? And I'll just point out something based on my experience. Even though I did get paid, there was a fight in a couple of cases. Take pictures, document everything, get receipts, mark down telephone calls, keep all that because 
because they're going to push and ask in some cases about what you did. And if you want to get all the money that you're entitled to, you better have good records. That's what I learned in my experience. Yep. So which companies offer the best rates? We're going to find that out next. I'm Herb Weisbaum, and this is Consumerpedia, powered by Checkbook.org. If you like what you hear, we hope you'll consider being a Consumerpedia supporter by using the link at the bottom of the show notes to make a small contribution each month. This is Consumerpedia. When it comes to insurance, price is always a factor. So Kevin, which companies offer the best rates? Yeah, well, so here's the thing, Herb. I mean, I can't really answer that. Property insurance companies use such you know complicated algorithms these days that every homeowner's mileage will vary, right, in terms of which companies will offer them the best rates. Hmm. Uh, things have gotten incredibly complicated in terms of how these companies determine what you'll pay, uh, really nearly to the point where our own price research, you know, all this reporting we've done of, of sample homeowner's insurance rates in each of our markets, I think it can only be considered anecdotal. You know, we can tell you the best rates we got for each of the homeowners that we shopped for, and I think that's useful information to see how much they can save. But I don't know that the lowest price companies for those homeowners will be the lowest price companies for each of you out there listening. Some general things I can tell you, though, is that State Farm, which is the largest home insurance writer in the U.S., typically does not offer low rates. Uh, Amica, it also offered high rates for almost all the sample families we shopped for. And some companies like USAA, which used to offer consistently low rates, doesn't now. We found that it, it rarely had the lowest rates in terms of the families we were shopping for. So again, if you haven't shopped for homeowner's insurance for a long time, if it's been five, 10 years, you'll probably be really surprised by how much you can save by switching. Here's something that really upsets me. In most states, insurance companies can use and do use credit scores to set their rates. Tell us about that and how credit scores are used to determine how much we're charged for our home insurance. Yeah, so in states that allow insurance companies to use credit scores, it's now by far the biggest factor in terms of whether you're going to be offered a low rate or a high rate with each company. They're also using other factors. They're looking at your occupation, your educational level. They're even looking at, you know, trying to decide whether they think you might be shopping around for insurance with other companies. The rate they're offering you sometimes depends on whether their algorithm decides you might be shopping other companies rather than just it for coverage. But credit scoring overall is having one of the biggest impacts in terms of the rates people be in charge now. And some states are reconsidering allowing credit scores to be used. As I said, this just absolutely upsets me. So if I have a low credit score, I'm more likely to have a tree fall on my house or my house catch fire. I, I just don't get why these things are related. They're using credit score as a proxy, not necessarily for whether you're a good driver or not, or whether, as you said, a tree fall is going to fall on your house or not. Uh, they're using it as a proxy for are you likely to have a claim or not. And those are very different things, right? You're insuring against the risk of having a fire, or being in an auto accident, or having a tree fall on your house. But the insurance companies, when they're writing these policies, their mantra is always, well, we're writing the rates we write are according to risk. But of course, if you earn less money, if you have some debt, you're going to be more likely to file a claim than somebody who might be willing to pay for small claims out of their own pockets. Mm. So a few states already ban uh, the use of credit scores for insurance companies in setting rates. Uh, California bans it and has for a long time. Same with Massachusetts. Uh, Maryland bans it just for homeowners rates. I really think all states should ban the practice. Uh, my biggest problem here is that there's absolutely no transparency now. Insurance companies don't have to disclose the formulas they're using to decide which customers get offered which rates. Nowadays, that's largely based on credit scores and other characteristics that have nothing to do with you know, how well they drive or what the risk is of a tree falling on their home. Mm -hmm. uh, insurance companies basically get to claim now that the formulas that they're using are proprietary. And they, they get to keep them a secret. So even if the factors and algorithms that they're using are dominating the decisions about how much you, you and I are going to pay for coverage, 
Uh, no, they get to keep those formulas a secret. And by doing so, they're really circumventing the laws that were put into place to prevent racial discrimination in the first place. Insurance companies have a long and terrible history of racial discrimination. And now they're basically you know, using credit scores and other information. They're calling it a proprietary algorithm or formula, and they don't have to even disclose anything about how they've calculated those rates to state regulators. I'd argue what they're doing today effectively is discrimination. Uh, insurance companies, as I mentioned, they argue all the time that they're simply rating individuals according to risk. They say over and over again, the risk sets the rate. But the effect of what they're doing here simply is that they are charging black people a lot more for insurance. They may be using proxies to do that. They may be using an algorithm that doesn't pay attention to that. But when they're relying on credit scores and occupation or whatever to set their rates, the real effect is that blacks are paying a lot more for insurance than whites. The reason most states require insurance companies to file their rates with them is that insurance companies used to really discriminate against minorities. And now they're doing that again, only this time the rate filings they send into the states, they're meaningless because they don't have to disclose or explain their real reasons for how they're setting their rates. They're saying, oh, they're proprietary. We can keep those a secret. Uh, when really the decisions they're making in terms of how they're pricing these plans, you know, it's using credit scores and other things that really have nothing to do with risk, real risk. And credit score use as a proxy would not only affect people of color, it would affect lower income folks. Yeah, this is really a moral issue, right? One reason people have low credit scores and really, you know, one of the, the largest sources of bankruptcies in this country is cancer. So if you've been unfortunate enough to have a serious illness and had a lot of medical bills, you're going to have to pay a lot more for a home and auto insurance, triple the normal rate because your your credit score has gotten low because you have this debt that you had no control over. I mean, I think even if you had a pretty you know cynical view of this and said, well, if people just paid their bills, this wouldn't be a problem for them. I mean, I guess you could make that argument, except that's really not what it, you know, pooled risk is about. Pooled risk is about, okay, you know, I want to insure against this financial catastrophe. Should I have to pay three times more than someone else just because I've had some debt issues in my past or I've lost a job, you know, or because I'm a minority, which is in effect is what's going on a lot of times, especially when they're including things like occupation and educational levels in their rating criteria. Or because there's a mistake in your credit report, which happens all the time. Yeah. You know, and the insurance companies know that. I mean, you and I know it, Herb, that, you know, most credit reports contain more multiple errors. And here they are, these insurance companies are relying on information they know to often be wrong and rely on it in such a way that those with poor credit scores usually pay three times more than those with good credit scores do for the exact same coverage. Which brings us back to where we started, why it's so important to shop around because you may get a better deal with the algorithm from one company than the algorithm from another company. Yeah, I think you know, if you have a low credit score, uh, if you've had some claims, uh, that's all the more reason to shop around every now and then. Some companies will view you, you as a higher risk. You're going to pay more than you would if you were seen as having a lower risk of making claims. But that also might mean you'll find bigger price variation among all the options out there. So here's an important question. How much coverage do you really need? Straight ahead, Kevin explains how to figure that out. I'm Herb Weisbaum, and this is Consumerpedia, powered by Checkbook.org. Consumerpedia Fast Facts. Homeowners insurance isn't cheap, and the costs keep going up. Premium prices increased by nearly 11% between 2021 and 2022, and the trend is likely to continue this year. According to MarketWatch, the national average for homeowners insurance is $2,417 per year. Data from Quadrant Information Services shows rates are cheapest in Hawaii, Nevada, Oregon, and Utah. Homeowners in Louisiana, Nebraska, and Oklahoma pay the most. When you buy homeowner's insurance, you need to make sure you have the right amount of coverage. You don't want to buy too much, but you don't want to buy too little. You want it just right. Kevin, tell us how to do that. Yeah, if you own a house, you need to insure up to the amount it would cost to rebuild your entire house uh, if there's a total loss, say if it burned to the ground or something like that. So that insurance amount, that coverage amount, that's different than what your house is worth if you decide to sell it today. It's different than the assessed value of your home. Because those other amounts, what you could sell your home for or what its tax assessment is based on, 
That includes the land your home is sitting on. And your land, it wouldn't be destroyed in the event of a fire. So you'd still have that parcel of land and could build a new house on top of it. So you only need to ensure what it costs to rebuild your house as it is now to completely rebuild it. And that's really important because I know people have said, well, my house is now worth $2 million because here in Seattle, the price of houses has gone up so much. No, no, no. That includes the land. It's what it would cost to rebuild your house, maybe $900,000, a $1 million, whatever it is. And you want replacement coverage to make sure you get it built to where it was before it burned down. That's really important as well. Yeah. And you know, where I live, where you know land is $3 million an acre, well, you don't need to insure that land. Again, it's the cost of what it would take to rebuild your home and to rebuild it as is. You unfortunately can't insure your home and say, well, if it all burns down, I'm going to build an eight bedroom mansion there instead. No, they're only going to insure what you own right now, what it would cost to rebuild it right now. And this is important because there are a lot of scuzzy insurance agents out there uh, that when you contact them, they might say, not a lot of them, but some of them say, oh, well, you know, your home is worth, you know, 1.2 million. So that's the insurance amount. That's not the insurance amount. The insurance amount is what it costs to rebuild your house. And the insurance companies do make it fairly easy. They ask you about dimensions and what you have, and they have these calculators that help figure out what, you know, you tell them what you have, and they sort of say, here's the coverage you need, and they've sort of agreed to replace your house to that thing. So it's not all that complicated as it sounds. It's This is like one of the few incredibly good developments in the world of home insurance is that <laughs> the insurance companies, they now have good tools, and they now share information with one another. Uh, they even look at permitting to see when people are making improvements. And all that spying they're doing, though, is a good thing in the sense that when you go to these companies to get an insurance rate, they tell you, okay, we think this is the amount of dwelling coverage you need to buy. You know, there's some differences from company to company, but overall, it's a better system than them saying to us, well, how much insurance do you want to buy? Because when that used to happen, when homeowners themselves were basically deciding how much coverage to buy or trying to figure it out themselves, uh, we found that they often underinsured. And for decades, this was a huge problem. Construction costs had gone up and everyone was still insuring for like $200,000, but it was going to cost $500,000 to rebuild their home. And that meant if they did have a total loss, the most they'd get from their company was two hundred grand, and they'd have to find the rest of that money to rebuild their homes. And that was, that was awful. But you do need to know it is still up to you to figure out how much insurance to buy. The companies will give you guidance and they'll spit out amounts, but it is really up to homeowners themselves to insure for the right amount. So what do you think about bundling your home insurance and your auto insurance? If you get the two policies from the same company, are you guaranteed a discount? Yeah, so some companies offer what they call a dual policy discounts. A lot of companies, they really promote these as ways to save a ton of money, right, in almost all their ads. Uh, and you definitely should factor in these potential savings when shopping around. But you also need to know that the 5 or 10% discount you can get off your auto rate or your home rate or even both it won't make a really expensive company a cheap option for you. So a good example of that, again, me, uh, USAA right now is giving me a small discount for insuring my cars and my home with it, but it's not going to be nearly enough to keep me from switching to Erie or my cars to Geico or whatever. And it's because, you know, most homeowners, they should shop for both types of policies and then make a value play. You know, where are the biggest savings here? And for me, it's not going to be the small discount I'm getting from USAA from bundling. So most policies come with a lot of optional coverage. Should we consider those? Well, it depends. At checkbook.org, we have kind of a yes-no guide to this. To summarize it quickly, it is usually worth buying replacement cost coverage for your personal property. Basically, that means that if you have a loss, the company will pay the price to replace the item as opposed to some depreciated amount. So if you lose everything, all your belongings in a fire, uh, and you don't have this coverage, then they're only going to pay you what they were worth as used items, not the amount to replace them new that writer is definitely worth buying. Okay. Uh, I'd also, I think most homeowners should bump up their liability coverage to about $500,000 a year. Doing that from the standard limits is really inexpensive to do, uh, especially if you have expensive jewelry. I think you should consider buying separate insurance for them. Most insurance companies are going to limit payouts for each item to a few thousand dollars. Some things to decline. These companies really push ID theft coverage. Herb and I, we, we've talked about this before. <laughs> that insurance is not worth buying. We also think that most homeowners don't need 
to buy earthquake insurance. Although in some regions, like especially out in the West Coast where you are, Herb, that decision depends really very much on your home's location and its vulnerabilities. If you're in a high-risk area, I think you should consider buying insurance, but know that what's being offered you is probably going to be really expensive and not be a comprehensive coverage. A lot of these policies, these earthquake policies, come with 15% deductibles, so they're not going to kick in until you've paid a lot of money for the damages. Uh, And finally, please watch out for gimmicks. Uh, We found this time around when shopping that a lot of these companies were offering things like home warranties and appliance breakdown coverage and all this nonsense that we often warn that are big wastes of money. And so just know that home insurance companies see that those things are really profitable and now they're pitching them also. And before we go, let's not forget our friends who rent or who own condos. They also need insurance. They do. And the reason we haven't spent a lot of time in this episode on renters or condo insurance is that those policies are usually pretty inexpensive. Most can find they can get enough coverage for only about $200, $300 a year. Uh, They should still shop around because some companies charge more than that. But for the most part, what you need to cover in those policies are just your belongings. The condo association or the landlord, uh, they're supposed to carry insurance to protect your building. So you're left to insure just your belongings against injuries to others and maybe even improvements you've made like cabinetry or things like that. Those things are pretty inexpensive to cover. Kevin and the Checkbook team put a lot of work into this article in the spring issue about home insurance. You can read a lot more about it on our website, checkbook.org. Kevin, thank you. You made us a lot smarter. Thank you, Herb. Well, that's it for this episode of Consumerpedia. You can subscribe to us on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way, you won't miss an episode. Remember, we release new ones every other Thursday. Another way you can support this show is to follow us on Consumerpedia on Facebook and Instagram, and at My Consumerpedia on Twitter. I'm Herb Weisbaum. Thanks for listening. Consumerpedia is a public service of Checkbook.org. We're a unique nonprofit that helps you save money and make smarter choices. You can count on Checkbook to help you find the best services and avoid the worst with local ratings that are accurate and unbiased. If you live in or around these seven cities and haven't joined Checkbook yet, check us out. Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, Seattle, San Francisco, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Washington, D.C. To get your free 30-day subscription, go to checkbook.org slash consumerpedia. If you like what you've heard, we hope you'll become a supporter by using the link at the bottom of the show notes to make a small contribution each month. Consumerpedia, empowering consumers to save money and make smarter choices.